Good morning to you all and welcome to this first Sunday in Advent at St. James. I want to remind you to wear your masks and to please respect social distancing, um, not only during the service, but as we leave. Um, <clears throat> if you did not receive this, you can ask Jan for a copy of it. Uh, it's uh, the Advent Activity Book. Looks great. Uh, next week, we will be celebrating the Sacrament of the Lord's Supper as part of our worship, and we are planning on a Christmas Eve service here on the patio at 3.30 p.m. It's good to see you. My car knows how to get here, even if I don't touch the steering wheel. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Let your hand be upon us that we may be made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life and we will call on your name. Let us worship God. This is a season of Advent. Advent means coming. It is a time of preparation for the celebration of Christmas. It is also a time of preparation for the future that God has planned for each of us. The ancient Israelites hoped for a Messiah who would come into their lives. In Isaiah chapter 11, we read, A shoot will come from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of power, the Spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. With righteousness, he will judge the needy. He will, with justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. That hope was filled in the birth of Jesus. In his life, death and resurrection and his promised return we know that we can trust God's power to resurrect and in God's sacrificial love because of Christ we anticipate the future with hope Today we light this candle symbolizing that Christ is the hope of the world. Because of Jesus, we know that God lets the past be history, that our future is assured in His hands, and that God is with us now. Let us pray. Eternal God, You were here before us and You summon us into the future. Bless us with this Advent season as we celebrate our heritage. Inspire us with your transforming creativity. Fill us with hope that springs from the confidence in your love and power shown in Christ. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The Gospel lesson for this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Mark, verse 24 through 37. Let us listen for God's Word to us. But in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender 
and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that He is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but My words will not pass away. But about the day and the hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say, I say to you all, keep awake. Wow. (laughs) A different place, slightly. A different format, but the same good friends that I have known and enjoyed in my ministry over the years here at St. James. We are in the midst of an incredibly challenging journey, and I cannot tell you how proud I am that you all are choosing to gather outdoors in a very safe way to enjoy a moment or two of worship and fellowship. These times are socially, emotionally, and financially challenging. And even the most hardy and resilient among us have, have to work hard to stay hopeful. I have a suspicion, though, that you would not be here this morning if you weren't trying to keep hope alive in the middle of this rather terrible health crisis. The scripture I read this morning for Mark is not an especially cheery one. Most of the scriptures in Advent aren't particularly cheery. It gets way better on Christmas Day. The scripture this morning is about the end of time and the need to stay vigilant because God will be coming and He will break in to even the bleakest of moments. But you have to stay alert. The scripture is designed to sober us up in anticipation of the coming of the One who we know as our Savior and Lord. It is really easy during this season to get distracted with our own issues, our own problems, and with all of the busyness that a Christmas season uh, has in store. So, this Scripture encourages us to not be naive or sentimental or nostalgic about this Christmas season and about the month ahead of us. Even though the commercial interests of the world would have had us celebrating Jesus' birth about a month before Thanksgiving. Have you noticed all the decorations that went up before Thanksgiving? Our Scripture suggests something very important that we need to remember. We must keep alert. We must keep awake for the coming of the Lord. The Lord will be coming. This season is very much like Lent in that God wishes us to prepare our hearts for the good news amid the rigors and challenges of this season and of some bad news. Clearly, it is important as Christians for us to rethink and recalibrate our lives if we want to be in preparation mode. If any of you have ever been backpacking, you know that simplicity matters. Deciding what to carry with you and what to leave behind is always the first step. 
What do you need to take on the trip that's essential? And what can you leave behind? Like your golf clubs or your ironing board. My first thought this morning, in this morning's reflection is what do you really need and what might you leave behind in order to make sense of this most holy of seasons? Is there some anger that you need to let go of? Are there some resentments you need to lay aside? Is there some squabbling that needs to cease because it doesn't make sense anymore? Might you forgive someone and really mean it? We are all worn down by this pandemic, but we don't, we don't have to be worn out with useless emotions that take us nowhere. A second thought for this morning has to do with all of the holiday traditions that we slog through and often find no joy in. Since we have to rethink gatherings in the first place, why don't we let this work to our benefit? Why don't we lighten the load and let go of a few things that might keep our season more complicated? Might we be open to something much simpler, much deeper, much richer? We shouldn't be going to the mall this year. We don't need to bake 1,400 cookies. We simply don't need to be running around. Can we please appreciate all of the small moments that God gives us in this season so that this season might be more fulfilling and rich and more spiritual? Lastly, our scriptures remind us to keep alert and to stay awake because we simply don't know where all the places are where God might want to find us this season. What small acts of kindness can we share with one another? How might we affirm the true meaning of Christmas in our family and with our friends? What can we still do to make Christmas a more deeply enriching time. I once taught a class at another Presbyterian church called Unplugging the Christmas Machine. The subtitle is How to Have a Christmas, Have the Christmas that You've Always Wanted. Let me read to you the Christmas pledge that all of the participants affirm at the end of the class after they have reflected on all of their Christmas activities and traditions. The Christmas pledge goes like this. Believing in the beauty and the simplicity of Christmas, I commit myself to the following. To remember those people who truly need my gifts. To express my love for my family and friends in more direct ways than presence, to redirect myself to the spiritual growth of myself and my family, to examine all of my holiday activities in light of the true spirit of Christmas, to initiate one act of peacemaking within my circle of friends and family. I realize that's a lot to chew on, But on this first Sunday of Advent, it's not too late to reorient yourself and your priorities towards the great possibility of Jesus being born into your life anew. I've given a copy of the Christmas Pledge to Jan and it will be emailed out to you uh, sometime, I think, today. You can put it up on your refrigerator just like my mother liked to have all of her spiritual things. Um, and um, read it now and then and think about who you are and what this pledge means for you. My wife Susan and I wish you all a wonderful, wonderful Advent and a very rich and happy Christmas. God bless you all. God bless you all.
Amen. been asked to remember in our prayers Luis, who has the flu, our custodian, 
And we want to remember two friends of this church, Nikki Smith, who passed away on the 18th of November, and Mary Nell Kirkwood, who passed away this past Thursday, November 26. We hold them in our prayers and our thoughts this morning and their families. Let us pray. O God, our Redeemer, by Your grace, You enrich us in speech and in knowledge. We can pray with all confidence that through Christ You hear us. You fill our days with the presence of Your Holy Spirit. We receive guidance for the decisions we must make. Waking or sleeping, we are enfolded with Your protection. You bid us to stay awake, to keep alert, to look for signs of Your reign. Open our eyes to behold Your presence in all parts of our lives. Keep us from putting You on the fringe of existence, from turning to You only when we are in need. Keep us forever aware that You accompany us in all of our journeys and help us to make You preeminent in all that we do. Let others see in us the first fruits of goodness and mercy, and they themselves brought to know You through our deeds of goodwill. You tell us through Christ to be ready since we know not when the hour will come. Keep us from putting off until another time the discipline that will make us better and stronger disciples. Make us willing to break the comfortable routine and dare to start ventures that will test our obedience. Surround us with those who have made similar commitments so that, we, so that they may teach us. Help us to seek their assistance and le- to learn their ways. You send us out to be about our tasks this day. Go before us to guide us and stay behind us to prod us. Live within us as God who fashions our being, as Christ who keeps us from falling. And as, Holy Sp- and as Holy Spirit in whose name we pray, we can do all things. And now, O oh God, help us to pray the prayer that Your Son, our Lord, taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to that which is good. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help all those who suffer. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the power of His Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace.